Major storm is impacting the Great Lakes, the Northeast, and well, some other parts of the East Coast as well. Although as you go further south, the weather front has kind of swung on through. But uh, on the whole, this has just been one crazy day with all sorts of weather going on. The winds ripping across Long Island uh, with gusts of 60 miles an hour or more in the last couple of hours. We're going to cover all of that and so much more. Uh, tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, which is brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system. Join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is pinned to the descriptor of this podcast. Use the coupon code WINTER2324 because in some places it ain't over yet. And if you do, you will get. You will get a beautiful 10% off. Amazing. Yes. What a crazy day, Joe. I mean, this, uh, this storm system is really enormous. And that's just the only word I could come up with with regards to its coverage. And when we look at the satellite and radars in just a little bit, I mean, it's, 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 it's huge. Uh, I, I, you know... What what else can I tell you? This 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 particular system has virtually everything. It's got it's got uh, severe weather, tornadic activity, thunderstorms, bouts of heavy rain, strong gusty, possibly even damaging winds, and yes, up north, snow. And and I'm not talking about just a few snow flurries or even an inch or two. Before this is all over said and gun, we're going to be hearing about folks up in upstate New York and portions of central and northern New England with at least at least one, maybe as much as two inches of snow. Incredible. Incredible. You mean, you mean two feet of snow, not two inches. And you, Tom Contino on the chat board says, never seen so much precipitation and no cold air on Long Island. Really? I mean, I've seen a lot of precipitation on Long Island in June and July and no cold air to produce snow, Tom. Tom's just a little bit desperate these understand days. Quite, I don't understand quite that, that exclamation of... Uh, no cold air on Long Island. Well, all right, that's that's the way it goes. I mean, but uh, folks, not too far away. If you want snow, if you're a snow lover, not too uh, just a stone's throw really to the north, relatively speaking, you'll get snow, and it's not going to be that puffy, powdery snow. It's going to be that. I, ju I just realized that it's probably going to be the heavy, wet snow. There are going to be a lot of people. Nysig, which is my energy supplier, or electricity supplier, who also supplies a lot of places up north. They're going to have a time of it. They're going to have a go of it because a lot of those power lines are going to be coming on down. And a lot of people are going to be plunged in the dark because of the power outages that are expected, I think, in the wake of the heavy, wet snow that falls over the next 24 hours. I'm going to look forward to, uh, and I was kind of glad, I'm really glad they did this. The Weather Service in Upton uh, is doing their rainfall amounts uh, for the, for the three-day three period going back to Monday. So uh, that that saves me that some legwork. I'm going to be curious to see the average. You know, everybody falls on the old saw about you know March winds bring April showers, April showers bring May flowers. Well, yeah, okay, but um, April's not particularly wet. I mean, it, it, it's three inches of change is the normal monthly rainfall for the month of April, and I'll bet you there will be more than a handful of stations that are going to. Uh, and reports that are going to have a month's worth of rain when you add Monday, Tuesday, and today uh, together. I've, as of three, as of four o'clock, some of the rainfall amounts were in the inch and a half to inch and three quarters, up to two inches. Uh, but there was convection going through late this afternoon and evening. <clears throat> I'm sure there are going to be some people that are going to eclipse the three inch mark uh, and get and uh, accomplish the feat of getting a month's worth of main, rain. And it's only. The third of April. You know, it, 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 that's amazing. I, I did a, I was doing some, uh, uh, an, an article uh, not too long ago. I do a lot of freelance writing. And I was talking about how uh, 1965 was the year of the great drought here in New York, the tri-state area. <clears throat> if you're of a certain age, you may even remember TV commercials. I remember one of a, a faucet dripping, drip, 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 drip. And that's all it did for 30 seconds. Then finally you hear a voice say, save water now. That year, 1965, Central Park picked up 26 inches of rain total for the entire year. <clears throat> it was the first and only time we've ever had at Central Park less than 30 inches of rain. 
you know what, Joe? I'm getting the impression we're going to get 26 inches at Central Park before, let's say, the end of, before Memorial Day at this rate. It's crazy. I was going to say that, but if, you know, we're, we're getting close to it. And we're getting pretty close to it now, with only a third of the year over. Welcome tonight to everybody on the chat board. Thank you for being here. I know it's a late start tonight. Um, this is, I might have the last, the last late start because tomorrow, I can't, I can't even believe I'm saying this. Tomorrow is my very last virtual library talk about the upcoming eclipse of the sun. And after tomorrow, and, and so we, we can go on tomorrow night at the regular 735 time, but there are no more, you know, juggles with the schedule. There's no more, you know, saying, oh, well, we have to do it at eight o'clock or 830 or whatever, because Joe's doing a library talk. Joe don't Joe don't have any library talks anymore after after tomorrow for a okay. while at least. So. Well, good. Welcome uh, to everybody on the chat board tonight to the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. And for those of you lurking in the background, a big uh, hello and big hugs to you too. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss us. Uh, we're going to go back to a normal schedule, so that means Sunday through Thursday at seven thirty-five p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays are all, usually off days for us, unless. There's a storm going on, and thankfully, there's no major storm on the horizon for the weekend, because we're still going to be trying to get rid of this one. Uh, so, right. And if you like the show, hit the like button, because this way Joe gets to ring the bell when we get to uh, 100 likes. And I might as well get, let's get, let's get going here. Let's get, let's get started, because we've got a lot to cover, and we'll start with the, uh, you know, anytime the watches and warnings map looks like a... In a colorful Christmas tree, you know there's a problem. And we've got you know, winter storm warnings up for much of Maine, except the two northern counties, all of New Hampshire, all of Vermont, a couple of uh, counties, one patch in northwest Massachusetts, the other one in north central Massachusetts, dealing with the mountains and the elevation, of course. Northeastern New York, winter weather advisories from parts of north central New York, south to the Catskills. Flood watches, and we've already have various flood advisories and flood warnings from uh, west central Pennsylvania, east across New Jersey to Long Island and southern New England. High wind warnings are up from New York City, Long Island, uh, West. I think um, I think for Westchester County too, or Lower Westchester County, and the co and coastal Connecticut advisories for inland areas. High wind warnings up for parts of the Jersey Shore. It's very tight though the gradient here in the sense that. If it's it's almost as if you could just go walk a handful of miles and you go from 40 to 50 mile mile an hour winds to you know 15 to 20 with gusts of 35 i mean that's just sort of how it's set up with where the low is and most of the severe weather was earlier today so it's done uh, so we're not really seeing much of anything other than it looks like there's one last special marine warning off the coast of uh, southeast florida uh, and that's it. Uh, we've got uh, wind advisories uh, in uh, parts of southern Minnesota, Iowa, and western Illinois. Now, that's because of the upper low and the leftover surface low that is up there now redeveloping in, Del in Chesapeake Bay and, and, and moving northeastward. We have uh, winter storm warnings up for the upper peninsula of Michigan, some few counties there and a few counties in northern Wisconsin, and wind issues. Uh, out in the west and uh, into the southwest, particularly with wind advisories and high wind watches and high wind warnings and all the rest of it. Uh, look at this satellite. I mean, God, I mean, the upper low is so impressive that spinning back over the Great Lakes, it's just got this giant comma uh, with all this moisture that has been pulled up the East Coast. I mean, it's just really impressive, Joe. Very impressive. Right. Right. I, I, like I said, Joe, this storm literally has everything to it. I mean, what is a storm? The only thing this storm doesn't have is a nice area of a hole in the clouds where you had a nice, sunny, bright uh, afternoon. But really, it, it, it's, a, it's a meteorological well, swizzle stick, if you will. Well, there, there's your dry slot. You yeah. know, there, there is a dry slot there. Uh, but the circulation, I mean, if you just kind of look at, you know, the wind flow around this goes all the way back west of the Mississippi, and then goes out into the Atlantic, out to about 60 degrees north. I mean, that is 60, 70, 80, that's over, that's a thousand miles. North, yeah. south, east, and west. That's actually more north, south, because 
the clouds have swept up into southern southern Canada there, and you've got the Gulf moisture that's moving with the cold front across Florida. I mean, this is just you know, it's just it's it's mind blowing uh, with how uh, you know how impressive it is. We also have some new moisture coming into the west as they've got another storm system to deal with there uh, in the uh, in the coming days. Uh, but for now, uh, it's mostly on the quiet side, except up in the northwest where there's a little bit more moisture. And and just again to look at this on the radar. It's you see it even better on the radar because on the enhancer you go to that when it goes to the infrared, um, you, you know you can pick up whether the circulation is. But when you look at the radar echoes on the on the radar, I mean, look at look at the circular area that's back over the Great Lakes that's uh, bringing snow and and snow showers and some rain showers down into Indiana and Illinois and into Ohio, and that's just rotating around. We have to get through that. Uh, in the next couple of days, which is why, uh, even though the heavy rain is probably going to end fairly soon, yeah. But the problem is now that we've got this upper low that's going to be moving eastward across uh, Indiana Ohio, and Ohio, and then Pennsylvania, and the center of the upper the upper low center is probably going to pass near or just north of New York City. So that's going to create a very uns cold and unstable atmosphere uh, for Thursday and for Friday. And then with, when it goes offshore, even for the first part of Saturday for New England, maybe from New York City eastward. So we're still going to be dealing with uh, self-destruct sunshine and clouds and rain showers and maybe even some snow showers or maybe some wet snow or, or grapple mixes in with this. It is, it's really incredible. Now, you remember, was it yesterday or the day before that I threw a fit or I threw a rant, as some say, concerning uh, there was one particular person on Facebook and he, he drew oh, me. Oh, right. It, it was, yeah, he drew me into it. I, uh, that was, what, two days ago. Right, right. Did you, get, did you get rid of them? Because I could not find those comments. I, I did not get rid of them, but tonight, tonight on my Facebook page, this same person who's who was you know pointing at us and saying oh what are they doing they're making a big deal out of nothing there's no uh, blah 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 here I'm, I'm quoting directly from a comment he made on my facebook page he writes at 5 59 p.m here in east chester lower west chester county we have numerous trees and some on vehicles and some transformers down on the streets as well then in capital letters, he says, stay off the roads every place. And then in parentheses, thunderstorms too. And I'm looking at this, this, this comment and I'm saying, well, gee, what happened? You said two days ago when we were talking about this type of weather pattern, oh, that's just all hype. Rayo and Chiafia making a big, big deal out of nothing. Now, all of a sudden, two days later, boom. I think somebody up there heard us, Joe, and pointed the finger at this, this moron and said, oh, you think they're making it up? You think they're making a big deal out of nothing? Good. Try this. Well, and, well and Joe, apparently this moron watches the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, which is on Sunday through Thursdays at 7.35 p.m. and off on Fridays and Saturdays. Well, I hope he's watching. Because <laughs> he is a moron. Because he, 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 got, he got me fired up, and I know he got you fired up as well. Hey, look, if we, if we think something is going to happen, if we honestly, after the combined uh, expertise of the two of us, you know, I just realized, Joe, going back to like the 19, 1978 or whatever like that, so now it's not 40 years, anymore, it's like 45 years for you and I. Right. That means that our combined expertise is like something like 90 years. If you think these two old guys in weather are making stuff up and are trying to get all of you, you know, all excited, or, I mean, there's no ratings for us. We we don't have to get rid. We have no vested. We have absolutely no vested interest in the outcome. We we're doing we this for your, benefit. for your benefit. We're doing this. We're, we're warning you about all this kind of mayhem. Now, if this this jerk from two days ago says, "Oh, they're making it all up. Fake news once again. It's hype." I can't believe Joe Rayo and Joe Chaffee are doing this. The last people I thought would be hype makers were Joe. Well, I, I hope you enjoy staying off the road. I hope you enjoy. Being out of power, I hope you're enjoying. I hope it 
I hope the tree fell on your car, okay? I'm, I'm sorry I'm saying this, but you know, you, you, you took a pot shot at us. Your, and I'm brand, not your, br your, brand, your brand new car that you just brought home yeah, three days ago. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Now we can resume, Joe. Christina Pedia says that there were, at least on Long Island, 128 outages in 2023 customers. 2023 customers. Couldn't be 2024. Um, 2023, 2023 customers affected for those in the PSE&G uh, uh, territory. I used to pay bills to PSE&G. No more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, you, but PSE and g or LIPA? Remember LIPA? Well, it was LIPA. Then you know, then it, then it, then it, the PSC and G took it over. Yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, here's the radar, and there's actually a severe. Let me make. Let me refresh this, because I think we have a severe thunderstorm. We had a severe thunderstorm warning in Ocean County not too long no, ago. No, no, Ruben Fairchild. No, it's not the gas bag. I just no. want to make that clear. No, no, not the gas bag. <laughs> um, uh. There's a spe there's there's a special there's a special round of agony that is awaiting the gas bag. Uh, hmm. Heavy precip is now moving up. It's still coming down pretty solidly over east the eastern half of Long Island. There's still some uh, patches here of some heavy rain and some convection. It's like there's maybe a thunderstorm off the south shore of Long Island moving northeastward now. Probably left over from what was over Ocean County a little while ago in New Jersey. Much of New Jersey, by the way, is done now as far as the rain is concerned, and same for eastern Pennsylvania. There's another area of precip down in Virginia that's fired up again uh, with the, some heavy downpours and even a couple of uh, thunderstorms. I see a few severe thunderstorm warnings and special marine warnings in southeast Virginia uh, at the moment. Uh, that's that's the, probably the last arm, and, and that might still work its way up northward. So. Uh, you know, might be a break here, and then maybe one last gasp during the overnight period before it's done. Uh, I noticed from the observations that it's still raining through most of New York State, but starting to see a few stations mixing with sleet. And in New Hampshire, I did notice a couple of places like Keene, New Hampshire, and a few others, and well, Mount Washington, obviously. But uh, those places have changed. Uh, a few places have now started to change over to snow. Uh, so we'll probably see that process continue now for the next several hours as we go through the overnight period. And again, you can see the circulation really well defined here on the radar uh, going back across the Great Lakes. Your upper low is probably sitting somewhere southeast of Gary, Indiana. So I'm still just judging from how the radar echoes are twisting around. I'm going to guess that that's probably where that upper low is. And meanwhile, up in the northwest, we've got some moisture that's rolled in there with some uh, rain in the valleys and some snow uh, in the mountains. Uh, WPC, the seven-day, well, let's look at, let's look at the two-day forecast. So uh, starting from 8 o'clock tonight, uh, this is a, on top of what's already fallen, okay? So we're looking at another stripe of a half an inch across central New Jersey and northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, that could be from that last batch of stuff that's more, uh, bubbling up down in Virginia. Uh, Three-quarters of an inch uh, to an inch for Connecticut and Long Island to Rhode Island. And then you get into the inch and a half to two and a half, two and a half inches plus in Maine and into New Hampshire and then you know back to parts of Vermont and northeastern New York. And, of course, we know that you know north of I-90, particularly you know when you start dealing with elevation, uh, you're, that's where you're going to see your big snows from there. Uh, lesser precip amounts, but still a tenth to a quarter of an inch. And in some cases in West Virginia, for example, there's a patchy area of a half to three quarters there uh, of additional precip. And there's going to be some snow down the central Appalachians uh, probably during the day tomorrow as this upper low starts to uh, move on by and rotate. And here's the probability for at least, well, let's change it to, I want to just show everybody the two, so you can see at least, if you use the 50% line, which is what I always use to, you know, if I'm going to draw a map and where am I going to put the two-inch line, I always see where, I, you know, I try to look and see where WPC's got the 50%, the and, and most of the time, you know, I kind of go along with that idea. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, but it doesn't get down into northern Connecticut. It's, it's, it's on the Massachusetts side. 
um, does have it, you know, Albany's probably in this little gap here where there's, you know, some probability that there could get, get a couple of inches. That's going to depend on, you know, a whole bunch of things with, with the, the topography there. But a large part of north, northeastern New York and Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, all in the probability of at least two, uh, where it's 80 to 100%. And the probability for at least eight in the Adirondacks, where we're talking uh, 50% to 100% probability there, and 80 to 100% across Vermont, New Hampshire, and for much of the state of Maine, except for the northwest corner. I'm sorry, the northeast corner. Or the north corner. I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> you know. Meanwhile, in the west, let's look in the west. Uh, we've got a, a new storm system coming in, and that's going to produce. You see the areas of high probability for at least two uh, in the northern Rockies, the Sierra Nevadas, and the Cascades. If we change it to eight. Uh, we see there are areas here of 50% or higher in the Sierra Nevadas and parts of the Cascades. Uh, also in northern Nevada and the southwest corner and the, of Idaho, the southeast corner of Oregon, and then further north up into Idaho and northwest, northeast Oregon, and up into parts of northwestern Montana with, uh, with respect to that. All right, let's, um, let's take a look at what's going to be happening now going forward. Because we're still dealing with uh, wind and and rain, and look at this upper low. I mean, how many contours is that? I didn't I haven't even counted this. Hold on a second. Let's count. You know what it looks like? It looks like one, one of those. It looks like those. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve contours cut off. Uh, this is. This is a gigantic bowling ball that is sitting there. It looks, like one of those, it looks like one of those moiré patterns from the 1970s where all the lines are so close together they'd actually play tricks on your eyes. I mean, this yes. is crazy. It's yeah, crazy. It and that upper low, excuse me, that upper low, and I mentioned yesterday, and it's worth repeating for you snow lovers, you need the upper low to track further south than what this one is doing. I mean, granted, today's today's run. I mean, this 18Z run, the upper low actually is tracking a little further south than um, what was ad advertised yesterday, but it's obviously not far south, far south enough. You would need it to be, you know, here it is tonight in northwest Indiana. It would have had to have dropped down somewhere in Kentucky uh, and then head out maybe across northern Virginia and off Delaware Bay or something like that or Chesapeake Bay. And then we'd be sitting here having a conversation about uh, snow, but obviously that's not happening. But we're starting with tonight, and it's going to take until this is Friday morning, 2 a.m. The upper low is basically sitting, you know, put the L somewhere in northwest Connecticut. So you've got this really, really cold, powerful, unstable feature that's coming straight for the east, for, for the northeast and northern mid Atlantic states until it gets out of the way. You cannot clear out. And then notice there's an arm that's coming around on the west side, another trough that's swinging down on Friday. So that's going to mean that we'll probably have to put in, again, Thursday and for Friday, probably going to put in the chance for some, um, some patchy showers and in areas where it's cold enough, maybe some wet snow or some grapple um, as that upper trough swings around. Finally, I mean, Saturday morning, Joe, the upper low is still sitting north of just north of Cape Cod. Yep. Uh, so, so, I mean, if you're looking for a completely dry, sunny day, you're probably going to have to wait till Sunday to get it, because by then the upper low should be far enough out to the east uh, that will squeeze it in. And now, by the way, the, that West Coast system, which is fairly vigorous in and of its own, is moving eastward. And, you know, a pit is dropped, a, 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 a sinking feeling, uh, the pit in Joe's stomach is dropping. Um, we are looking at this upper low coming eastward, uh, heading uh, toward the Great Lakes. However, there's a little ridge in between. That upper low actually gets deflected northward and northwestward. It rotates up into Iowa and back into South Dakota. And the ridge in between that and the old storm actually strengthens a bit. So keep your fingers crossed uh, that it keeps any moisture 
and even just cloud moisture, because this is not going to be a a, 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 a well-defined system that's coming east. It's actually going to be weakening as it moves up into the upper Mississippi Valley. It's because we want to keep those clouds out of the way so Joe can see his eclipse in Plattsburgh. I uh, made the comment. Actually, I didn't make a comment. I actually put a whole discussion on my Facebook page, and I pointed out that, generally speaking, you look for the upper-level high-pressure ridges and the axis of the ridge usually marks the leading edge or the front edge of the next system spreading mid and high level clouds your way. In other words, the ridge gets dirtied up, if you will. And it looks like, Joe, that that ridge line is going to be somewhere over west central New York, just as the eclipse is starting on Monday, which means yeah. that if you're in places like, like Buffalo or Niagara yeah, Falls, or Syracuse, right, right there. Yeah. Just, I'm, well, that's not it. Now you'll see it on the screen. Should we see it right now? Uh, but there it is. Yeah. So, so you should be it, okay. Well, you know, the thing is with me uh, and people in New England, for example, uh, in New Hampshire and Vermont, and even up in Maine and in New York State, the Adirondacks, the Green Mountains, the White Mountains, the Longfellow Mountains in Maine. How many of you ever heard the, of those mountains? The problem with these mountains are that they could, as Joe mentioned uh, earlier, they could help to generate self-destruct sunshine, a bright and sunny start to the day. And then all of a sudden you see these big billowing cumulus clouds popping up uh, all over the place. And by eclipse time, we may actually have uh, scattered to broken cloud cover. And people look up at the sky, oh, no, look at all the clouds in the sky. It's terrible. Oh, we're going to miss the eclipse. But the eclipse, which will last 75 minutes from the start to totality, as the moon moves in front of the sun and as the uh, incidence of, uh, of solar uh, heat begins to lower, the temperatures start to drop. As that temperature starts to fall, the clouds, which are which more or less are pushed or run by sunshine, now the sun is disappearing, the temperature is falling, and now those clouds are going to say, hey, wait a minute. Hey, where's the, where's the nice warm sunshine? Where the, and they'll start to shrivel or dissipate. Now, the key to this is how much of that cloud cover will be gone by totality? It could very well be, and I, there have been many eclipses in the past where this has happened, where people have looked up, oh, look at that beautiful corona. It's a, a spectacular. That's wonderful. But there's always that chance that there could be a stray cloud left over from that big bunch that was there a couple hours earlier that didn't quite shrivel up or didn't quite dissipate and could find itself right in front of the sun during the total eclipse. That's what I think I'm going to have to worry about. And the folks who are going to New England, yeah, it looks like it's going to be great there, but you got to worry about those building cumulus clouds and hopefully this the eclipse will be able to take care of them and get rid of them uh by uh by the total eclipse time and people who live in central and western new york from syracuse or rochester west to niagara falls and buffalo and uh deeper toward cleveland are you listening dennis cassia i don't think dennis is going to cleveland anymore but the further west you go as you pointed out joe at that upper level low the new one moving into the great lakes area the further west you go, the more you're going to see increasing and thickening cloud cover. The eclipse doesn't work on those kind of clouds. Those clouds lower and thicken and uh, become rather opaque, and uh, you're screwed if you're trying to see the sun through that. So what you're going to hope for is generally fair skies and those big puffy cumulus clouds, which will fade out as the eclipse progresses on uh, on, on Monday. Well, uh, a couple of things. Uh, first off, uh, on the uh, chat board, uh, I have just pinned the link to the uh, special page that they've put up on Pivotal Weather. It's uh, it's pinned to the top of the chat board, and I also it's up on the screen right now. And and this actually is pretty cool, Joe. I don't know if they I I didn't notice this till today. I was pulling up the individual GFS maps, but they had this special page for the Eclipse 2024, and right. you can look at every model. You can choose your commute, uh, computer model. Uh, so, um, for example, I have on the screen the Canadian model. Uh, you can choose your uh, 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 model, then choose the, what you want. They give you two choices, either cloud cover or probability of precipitation. And they will pull up uh, the U.S. map, but then you've got all these choices where you can go to all these regions along the path of totality right. so you can see a close-up. 
Uh, so if you click on New York, for example, which I'm just going to do, and I'll switch over to the GFS. Uh, this uh, their their map showing the probability of cloud cover, uh, and you know if you run your cur well it's not I'm doing the cursor thing here today, but uh, on this graphic, but uh, Plattsdam, which is to the west of Plattsburgh, twenty five percent cloud cover on the GFS. Watertown thirty five percent, Utica thirty five, Saratoga Springs twenty six. So they're outside of the path of totality. Burlington, Vermont. At 25%. Uh, but then if you go further south and west, Rochester at 51, Buffalo at 51, Jamestown at 53. So the kind of, it, it's very useful. Um, uh, I know a few people, if you go to North Texas, uh, they're looking at, at least based on the GFS, uh, looking at 78% cloud cover in Dallas, 77 in Paris, Texas, 84% in Texarkana. Um, 89% in Tyler, 92% in Waco. Uh, so, you know, obviously this is going to be problematic. And Dennis Cassie is going to Cleveland or was going to Cleveland. He's, he's changed his mind. I think he's going to be uh, linking up with a fr old friend of his in Plattsburgh as well. But he, And he told me, he said, I don't really want to go to Cleveland. Not that he doesn't like Cleveland, but the fact is that from where he is in Connecticut to Cleveland is like a nine-hour drive. And who wants right. to drive nine hours? Yeah. Well, Cleveland's at 69%, Akron at 70, Youngstown at 68, and they're like right on the, just outside the, the border of the path of totality. Sandusky, 73, Finley, 72, uh, Marion, 71, Mansfield, 73, Dayton, 72, and um, Cincinnati, 68 for, yeah. uh, for, for uh, Cincy. So you got the link there, folks. Uh, so you can uh, use it or share it. You don't need to. You can. You don't need to log in. Okay. You don't need to have an account there. You can just pull the map up um, with ease. So and that's so very nice. Can. That the fact is that you're able to take advantage of. Uh, and and they and they know. You know, if Pivotal Weather was the kind of company, say, they know that there are a lot of people out there who desperately would want to get this information and desperately would like to have it. Why don't we charge them for that? You know, but they're not doing that. So the, you can you can have access to these maps, and they and if you plan to see totality, you can use them for yourself. And I, I think that's really good. And and by the way, uh, if you still haven't gotten glasses or you can't find them, uh, you can go on the lower left of the live stream tonight, and you'll see there's a little chopping button over there. And, and I've put up um, there's there's a uh, if if you want to have the, the there's uh, uh, it's called uh, Visi Solar uh, Eclipse for your uh, with your smartphone. Uh, these are all from I believe they were all from Walmart. So you've got that. Uh, if you need more than one set of glasses for whatever reason, uh, I've got a, a a link for Solar Eclipse glasses for, uh, for a six pack, uh, and uh, that's up there right now as well. And also. Uh, the uh, a single one, uh, and you know you can take a look at that. The single one is just a dollar ninety nine. The six pack uh, is twenty four ninety nine, and the um, busy solar solar eclipse for the, your smartphone uh, with the glasses in the smartphone is twenty four ninety nine. So those are all up there. Uh, you, you you can order them if you like if you need them. Uh, just to make it uh, easier for you. All right, let's get back to uh, the weather maps here. And uh, we'll, of course, have one more. Well, we've got tomorrow and then uh, maybe and Sunday. I'm, I don't know if Joe's going to be here Sunday, but I'm going to be here Sunday. Uh, the upper low pulls out just kind of looking down the road. I mean, we don't see anything major after this, which is nice. Um, so that's a plus. Uh, but we do have a whole bunch of troughs moving through. And in the next uh, couple of weeks, but at least we're not going to have another mega cutoff uh, based on what I'm looking at uh, with respect to the models. And uh, taking a look here with respect to uh, how this all plays out on the surface. So, you know, here's your redeveloping low is uh, sitting right on the Delmarva Peninsula right now and moving over, uh, moving off the New Jersey coast and then just south of Long Island. By one a, by two a.m. by eight a.m. it's south of Montauk, so it's just beginning to pull away. 
Uh, but you see where the heavy snow is breaking out overnight uh, over Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, and northeastern New York, uh, continuing into tomorrow afternoon with the surface low now past its peak and starting to weaken. But again, it's all about the upper low. So it's gusty northwest winds for Thursday and Friday and Saturday, patchy showers uh, around. Not everybody's going to see them. Maybe even a couple of wet snowflakes in the mix if you get in a place that's cold enough and elevated enough. And then finally on Sunday, we get to some sunshine. And there's your plains low, the 983 low that suddenly uh, moves up into northern Missouri uh, Monday morning and then starts to turn northward. And again, as long as it stays west of the lakes, uh, hopefully it'll keep the high clouds. It's just enough ridging to keep the high clouds out. And then it looks like some kind of Gulf low forms later next week, uh, maybe bringing some rain next Wednesday night, Thursday, perhaps. Long ways off, but again, <laughs> nothing major. And then that goes out, and then it looks like you know a couple of weather fronts, but you know no big deal here. Uh, but that's good. We don't need a you know we've had so many of these major rainstorms. I mean, just enough. I I think. I think really people have had enough of uh, of this. And by the way, Joe, it's it, it's going to be chilly here. It's going to be chilly here down in Georgia, and and, and you can see the snow that, that the GFS is showing in uh, the West Virginia mountains and maybe even into the, some of the high elevations in North Car Western North Carolina. But uh, it's going to be chilly in the Northeast the next couple of days. Temperatures today did they even get out of the low to mid forties anywhere? I don't think so. No. I mean, it was no. raw. It was horrible. So you're looking at 40s. Maybe, maybe you could nail it up to 50 on Friday and on Saturday if, if you get enough sun before it self-destructs. And then definitely should warm up reasonably uh, as, we get, uh, as we get to Sunday. Now, I, sa I said uh, to Renata that according to uh, the, uh, the Moss forecast for Plattsburgh, upstate New York, on eclipse day, it should get up to as high as 55. And she shook her head vigorously and said, no, I don't think so. They said, look, think of all the snow cover they must have. He says, it'll never get to 55. But it'll be interesting to see how, how warm it gets. It'll also be interesting to see how much snow is on the ground when we get that far north on Monday after uh, what, they're, what they're seeing, you know, the next day or two. Yeah, this time of year, I mean, this time of year, it, it disappears fairly quickly. Right. You could, you could certainly, you know, one day of sunshine, you certainly could, you lose at least half of it. Um, right. You know, and then, yeah, well, we'll see. There probably will be some. I don't, I, I, I don't know if it'll be enough to impact your temperatures that much. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, people, you know, who want to be, uh, you know, able to maneuver or be able to uh, uh, have mobility in case some clouds come along, get on the roadway. I think that the the main drags, the interstate highways, probably will be free and clear on Monday. But how about those little, you know, side roads, especially in Maine? You know, take a look. At, you have a look at Maine and and the roads that they have up there. They have a lot of it's dotted with a lot of little towns, all the communities, right? And very, you know, the the, the road wind, windy and yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. how it is here. By the way, you won't find here on the traffic signs on the interstate. Um, signs that say solar eclipse Monday, Monday, use mass transit. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I, I, and, and a lot of people probably would be completely unaware that an eclipse is happening. But, if it weren't what, what, what's the logic behind that? I mean, do they, do they expect people to just like stop on the highway and, and, and look at an eclipse in the middle of the road? I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not understanding the need to tell people to use mass transit. I told I'm, I did not experience this in 2017, but I am told by a number of people that in 2017 for the total eclipse, you were able to drive in the totality. But getting home, uh, the roads were just like jam packed with people. People said, oh, it normally takes me two hours to get home. It took me eight hours, you know, because there's so many people who after the eclipse said, all right, let's go. And I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to know what it's going to be like um, on 87 heading home after the eclipse um and especially since a lot of people looking at the weather maps and everything are now aware that hey the place to be is northeast new york state 
or New England. All of those roads are going to be, you know, probably, I, I think, you know, clogged with people. And when I'm making the illusion about the snow, yeah, the main drags are going to be clear uh, in Maine. But how about those little small roads, those side roads all over Maine? That's that's all Maine is. It's just one small community of side roads and small. You think those roads will be clear for uh, of, of the snow on Eclipse Day? Can you imagine you know, somebody trying? Oh, let me take. I'll take route number. Uh, what is that? U.S. No, county route number twenty six. Let's go down. The locals will not have any issues. Yeah. The locals will have no problem. Right. With it, it's the out of state people that come up. Exactly. The ones that come up from places where it doesn't snow very much. Those people will create issues. Right. We shall see, Joe. I, I, I right. promised you that. I promised you that. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna try somehow or other on Sunday, Sunday evening. I should be in our hotel by by Sunday evening. I'll try to try to do a Joe and Joe on Sunday evening from. Uh, well, I've done it from Antarctica. How 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 can I not try to do it from uh, from upstate New York? So, well, you know, please by all means, if there's any snow left, you can make a snowball and show it on the air. Yeah, why not? Show it to all the people, all the snow lovers here who didn't get to make a snowball or got to make very few of them this winter. Yes, Reuben Fairchild. Yeah, finally a road show. Reuben Fairchild all through this whole thing on the chat board is saying Rayo should do a live on Sunday. Ray, I demand that he that he that he does something on Sunday. You know, that, that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I have to answer to Reuben Fairchild. I didn't know that. You do. Yes, we all do, Joe. We all have to answer to Dr. Reuben Fairchild. Yes. Um, do you have Briller Jeopardy? I believe I do. Okay. I and, I while, and while you do that, I'm going to go on your Facebook page. I want to read the, uh, see what this bozo said literally. It's my, it's my, uh, it's on the, the page, it's on my professional page, the checkmark page, and it's on the pay, it's on the uh, one where I uh, promoted tonight's show. It's one of, okay. I think it's, a, it's the first comment in promoting tonight's Joe and Joe weather show. But uh, yeah, uh, by the way, are, are you still able, are you able to get on your personal pages? I know you were having problems posting there. Are you still yeah, having I, problems? Oh, I know. There was about a couple of weeks where, I wasn't able to post anything on my personal page, but now I, I am able to do it. They fixed it. It took them about two weeks to do it, but they finally fixed it. So that's nice. Um, okay. I'm looking for, so by the way, so this comment by, by the way, was on the, on the weather post for this show. Yes. Well, if it was there, it's gone. No, it said, uh, I'll, uh, before I do anything, let's give me, give me share capabilities. Sure. Why is it I couldn't find yesterday's, and now I can't find today's? No, that's that's Facebook, you know? Um, the, Hold on a second. Sure, I'll give you the share. Hold on a second. Let me get to it. Uh, okay, it's all yours. All right. So, now, let me first... Uh, hang on. I'm going to get to... <clears throat> okay, my page and yep yeah, here it is oh yeah perfect all right so now i'm gonna i'll i'll show it <clears throat> but we'll also see the name of the person who posted it originally joe oh well maybe we yeah well, maybe we shouldn't do that i'll tell you what show it to me all right after, I'll show but it. i i'm not understanding why i can't see that comment Oh, I don't know why either. It's on. It's it's on the post from four hours ago. Correct. Tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast live at eight thirty yeah. p.m. That's exactly. the one. Yep. Now on mine it says there's only three comments, and I oh I have to hold on. I got to change that to all comments. Let's see. Maybe now I can get it. Nope. I can't see your. I can't see it. That's bizarre. All right. Uh, anyway, all right. Show it to me afterward. Show it to. You. I'll sh show it to you afterwards. Let's go to. Uh, Let's go to the Briller Jeopardy, and uh, we'll do that right now. Here we go. Scott Briller. <laughs> uh, this is great. Here we go. Hi, Joe. On this Briller Jeopardy, who played these Batman TV villains? Are you ready? We've got seven Batman TV villains. You have to pick the actor who played each villain. Are you okay. all set? 
I'm sorry. Well, here we go. Number one, who was the actor who played the Mad Hatter? Um. Oh God. Name is uh, his face is right in front of me. Name is uh, David Wayne. That's right, David Wayne. All right. Here's not. This was an easy one, Joe. I mean, he's he must have appeared on Perry Mason at least five times, and he also appeared as King Tut. Well, that was Victor Buono. Victor Buono, correct. Number three, the Puzzler. Uh, the Puzzler. The Puzzler, and I'm going to give you a hint. Was it he? He was Andorra's husband. <laughs> oh, Maurice Evans. That's right, Maurice Evans. Number four, the Sandman. Um, the Sandman was that Michael Rene. Michael Rene, and number five, Doctor Somnambula. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, and, and wait a minute, and who was he trying to help? Gay Pauline Spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you're not old enough. Um, one of the richest guys that lived when we were young was J. Paul, uh, J. Paul Getty, who was Getty Oil, okay, which eventually sold out to whoever Getty Oil sold out to. I forgot. Um, but, yeah, so he, there was a, it was a play on J. Paul Getty, uh, who was the richest man in the world at one time. So there was J. Pauline Spaghetti. Yeah. Here's number five. Number five got my eye. Yeah, I was only twelve or thirteen years old when she made this made this appearance on Batman as a Ooh, villain. Julie Julie Newmar? No, oh, not Julie Newmar. The Siren. Oh, the the Siren was uh, was wasn't that Joan Collins? Joan Collins. Remember, she wore like a, a an outfit, a, a dress that was like aluminum foil. Yes. This outfit, and she opened her mouth, and it was like a high pitched sound. Ah! And anyway, how about? <laughs> How about, oh, you'll, you'll love this one, Lola Lasagna. <laughs> Lola Lasagna? Yeah. I'm trying to remember if that's Shelly Winters? No. No. Although I made a good Lola Lasagna. Lola Lasagna. There's no business like show business, Joe. Oh, Ethel Merman. Ethel Merman. Or she was well known as, back in the 60s, the Merm. <laughs> A lot of actors at that time were begging to get on that show. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. How mean, about, they, I mean, like they, yeah, they, if not to get on the show as an, as a, as a villain, to get on the show and make a cameo appearance as they right. climb the side they of the building. Right. And they go open the window. Right. In fact, in fact, on YouTube, I know that they have like, there were like 17 different actors who did that, the cameo appearance, and you can see all 17 strung together on YouTube if you want to. I know Jerry Lewis was one of them, and uh, that's just it's just crazy. Last one, Joe. This should be easy for you. Bookworm. Roddy McDowell. Roddy McDowell. Yeah, who was – I always try to – you know, I'm trying to remember um, False Face. Was false Face. For- False face. I, I'm thinking that that was. I think it's, it was a weird name. It was Malachi Throne or something like that? Right. Okay. And in fact, and, and in fact, on uh, the first round of credits, when they said false face, they had like question marks, like they they didn't right. they talk as to who he was. And here's one. Were... Here's one that was not on Scott's list. Uh, the Archer. Art Carney. Art Carney. Right. <laughs> You know what's sick? What's sick is that I know all of this. And I, and, 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 and I, I, I was struggling today to remember the name of, a, of someone who I, be, I, 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 got, I, I became friends with at the dog park with his dog. And I couldn't remember his, his name, but I remembered his dog's name, which was Jack. And then I finally, yeah. you know, after after like struggling for a little while, I finally remembered his name. His name was Dennis, but uh, is Dennis? Is he still with us? I just haven't seen him in quite a while. So if you're watching the show, Dennis, hi, Dennis. Um, but you know, you, I remember all this useless information, just utterly useless information. Uh, but I can't remember. I can't remember half the things I did today. Well. 
We're getting up there, Joe. Correct. What can I say? And then, of <laughs> course, who, and then there was the Black Widow. Oh, please. And then, you know. Tallulah Sh Bankhead. Remember Shame? <laughs> shame. Was that Cliff Robertson who played Shame? Yeah, it was Cliff Robertson. Okay. They had a little kid. They had a little kid ending right. one of the other. And shame. Shame. Yes. And, <laughs> and um, Shelly Winters played Ma Barker. And who played the original Mr. Freeze? Uh, the original Mr. Freeze, I believe, was uh, Otto Preminger. Right. And then uh, was played by Eli Wallach. Right. And uh, Frank Gorshin was the Riddler, except in the last was, years, it was, then it, was, it was John Astin. It was John Astin, which didn't work, by the way. <laughs> No, Gorshin, you know, did you know that it, that was definitely him. But, I mean, I'm watching, I'm watching John Aston as the as the Riddler. And I'm expecting him any moment to say, "Count me <laughs> right. then, then there's three, the three Cat Women, uh, which right. was, was Julie Newmar, and and it was Julie Newmar, Lee Merriweather, Eartha Kitt. Right. Um, Julie Newmar, the reason she left the show, she she left the the, the show. Was um, she? Uh, she was. Uh, she had her son, uh, who had who uh, had down had, has Down syndrome, and she took. You know, she left the show in order to take care of her son. Right. Uh, Eartha Kitt was um, an interesting. You know what it is. You get. You get sometimes you with these shows. You get so married to whoever the character is being played by that if they when they if they switch them, you know you it, it, you don't accept them the way you would. Julie Newmar got us over the 100 mark. Right. Um, right. But, you know, Cesar Romero was just brilliant. He oh, was, yeah. He was, and, uh, and Vincent Price's egghead. Where'd you go? Hang on. Hang on. Go ahead. I'm, yeah, I'm waiting. wonder what he's up to. He's getting something. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing with Cesar Romero was, you know, if you looked close, you didn't have to really look that close, but if you look closely on the screen, you could actually see the mustache yeah. under his makeup. Exactly. It's just too funny. My, my, yeah, son, got... my son got me this because we got into a huge argument one day about who was the better Joker. Was it uh, his Joker? Which was um, uh, what's his name um, from the movie Robinson? Uh, oh, so, Nick yeah. I... Was it Jack Nicholson or was my it was my Joker Cesar Romero? And I think for Christmas or a birthday or whatever like that, he he said, "Here, this is for you." <laughs> it has to. Be. I'm trying to find that. You know, I sent that picture to you. Was it last year or two years ago? Of. Uh, the baseball picture. You, you know what I'm talking about? Baseball picture. Yeah. I'm trying to find it now really quickly so I bring it up on the screen. Uh, hold on. Give me give me a second here. Uh, let me see if I put in uh, uh, baseball. Um, oh, I, agree with, I agree with you, Rich Rothmansky, but Frank Gorshin was a brilliant Riddler. Yes. And he I, he did a lot of Broadway. Yes. Um, let me see if it, if I can get this image to be big enough, we could put it Burgess, on. Burgess, Burgess Meredith in, in in an interview, he was talking about all the things that he had done on television, Broadway, movies, and anything else. And he said, "And yet, when I die, what am I going to be remembered for? There's only one thing I'm going to be remembered." But and incidentally, this interview came before Rocky. So, I mean, we'll all think of him as Mickey now, the uh, manager of Rocky, Rocky Balboa. But before that came along, he said, eh, what am I going to be remembered for? Ram, ram, ram. Exactly. Well, you know, the Mets are what, 0-4 or 0-5? 0-4, I believe, yeah. Well, you know, you could use the Joker as your starting pitcher. Remember that when, when he was, oh, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, 
and it, it, the the uh, through the pitcher's mound, this 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 spring came up from underground and catapulted him out of the prison. Right. That was just too funny. Uh, you know, the shows then you watch them now. I mean, you know, they're so bad, but they're they're good. That, that's just that's just kind of how it works. Renata D, I already rang the bell. She says she's putting the bell there, or maybe she's putting the bell there because she said maybe it's time for us to wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> and it might be. <laughs> all right, all right. So the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast we brought to you by. We should do a Joe and Joe. Joe, we should do a Joe and Joe show just about Batman. We should. <laughs> Uh, Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system. Join the fastest growing observing network weather network on the planet. The link is pinned to the descriptor to this podcast. Lose, use the coupon code WINTER2324 because if you do, you will get... You'll get 10% off. Yeah! <laughs> on anything you purchase. Exactly. All right, so we're back tomorrow night at our usual time, which is 7.35 p.m. Eastern. Uh, everybody have a great night and stay safe. Don't blow away with the big wind if it's still howling where you are, and or don't float away with all the rain we've had. And we'll see you tomorrow night. 99. Good night, folks. 99.